I'm really interested in the project that you're working on now. I'm a little bit baffled by it, so I'm just going to answer my own question. So you were working on uh, World War II, mm -hmm. which has to be, even more than the Kennedy assassination, the most written about event in human history. I can't think of one that has occasioned more books. So um, why World War II? It is going to be the most fruitful place that any aspiring historian can dive into because we spent the last 70 years, I mean, in Europe's case, like literally throwing people in jail for looking into the wrong corners, right? So there's so, and even, even. Particularly in Austria. I can right, say. right. And so even in the United States. It was States, an invaded country. So I'm not exactly sure why it's so important. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> it's a big topic. But I mean, even the United States where, <laughs> uh, where, where. You're not going to go to jail necessarily for for doing that. Um, you might have your life ruined and lose your job. You might absolutely else. go to jail in this country. Uh, nowadays, you might, yeah. Um, but, you know, for you could write a book. You could take any angle on it you want. You're not going to ever get a job or have a publisher want to publish it or anything, but you could do it. You can go out on the street corner and stand on a box and say whatever it is you think. Uh, but even, even still, you know, that event is really, it's, 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 it's such a core part of the state religion that there are emotional triggers built into people since childhood that almost prevent them from, from taking an approach that would, uh, that would, that, that might lead them uh, to information or to conclusions that are not part of the state religion's version of, of that event. That was a snippet from Tucker Carlson's interview with so-called historian Daryl Cooper. And the conclusions that he's talking about there regarding World War II is that the Nazis weren't so bad. Literally. He argues that Winston Churchill, as opposed to Adolf Hitler, was the chief villain of World War II. And he also says that the Holocaust wasn't necessarily deliberate. It was more of an accident. I'm not making this up. As Mediaite explains, Cooper went on to make controversial claims about the Holocaust, suggesting that rather than a deliberate plan to exterminate the Jewish people, it was an unintended consequence of Germany being completely unprepared to handle the millions of prisoners of war. Hmm, I wonder why they were taken as prisoners of war. Uh, according to Cooper, millions ended up dead. They just ended up dead, according to him, because there was no food to feed them and German soldiers believed it was more humane to finish them off quickly. This is the outrageous shit that Tucker Carlson chose to platform. In other words, he thinks the Nazis kind of got a bad rap. Yeah, this man is a Holocaust revisionist that this guy, Tucker Carlson, decided to bring on his platform. And that interview was uploaded to Twitter. And can you guess who shared this interview? Just take a wild guess. Chief Twit himself, Elon Musk. That's how bad Twitter has gotten. And side note, there was a viral photo of a little girl wearing a shirt with a swastika on it while she was sig hailing with the caption from, I'm assuming her father, saying that she's being raised right. This kind of shit is common on Twitter, thanks to Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. But even some Republicans went out of their way to publicly condemn Tucker Carlson's Nazi apologia because, of course, yeah, this is bad. Republican Mike Lawler, for example, called it deeply disturbing that Tucker Carlson would platform a Holocaust revisionist. Don Bacon said there's no whitewashing Hitler's history of mass genocide. And look, I've just got to say, you know, it's so bad when Republicans are coming out to say, yo, this right wing propagandist that we're all cool with actually this thing that he did is bad. When they condemn their own, you know that it's bad. But they're not alone because other right-wingers, they saw this and they thought, this is a little bit too far. So uh, one of them was the Babylon Bee. They actually produced a satire article because this is a satirical comedy website. You know, whether or not you actually think they're funny, that's subjective. But they mocked Tucker Carlson for this and uh, they published an article titled, Tucker Carlson guest suggests Avengers were the real villains in Infinity War, and they shared the article on Twitter to promote it. Now, this is where we get to the meat of the story, because even though prominent Republicans condemn this since, you know, this is uh, a media figure who is associated with the Republican Party and he's buddy buddy with Donald Trump, the presidential nominee. So you kind of have to condemn this, both because it's morally outrageous and also because you want to save face if you're a Republican. So, you know, they're against it. But just 
Think about whether or not the Republican Party's base or regular conservatives on on Twitter would be open to Holocaust revisionism in this day and age, especially, you know, on Twitter where they're bombarded with so much Nazi nonsense after Elon Musk emboldened Nazis and brought back the ones that were banned. Think about what they think about this. So, you know, let's just talk about the response to that casual joke from the Babylon Bee because it wasn't received too well by their own right-wing followers, people who purport to be fans of the Babylon Bee. See, when they make fun of, you know, marginalized people, trans people, when they make racist jokes, everything is copacetic. They love it. But when they make fun of, you know, inbred racists, as they've done in the past, they get pretty pissed off. And now, you know, after making fun of Tucker Carlson for doing Nazi propaganda, the Babylon Bee's right-wing followers weren't too happy. So here's some of the replies that they got. Weak and dishonest. Massive L. Y'all have lost the narrative. Go figure. Of course, these clowns have something to say. I have been a big fan of the Babylon Bee until they fell in line with the mainstream media talking points on this particular subject. The mainstream talking points being, you know, that the Holocaust was bad and that Nazis are bad. Uh, I've yet to hear anybody refute anything that the man said. An inconvenient truth is still a truth. So, you know, this user drank the Kool-Aid. Another person says, eat shit, regime lackeys. The Babylon Jew. I used to like the bee till I figured out it was just a bunch of Jews running a media company as usual. For those who don't know, the owner of the Babylon Bee or the CEO, Seth Dillon, is Jewish and they attack him because of it. The fact that you can only look at this through a lens of comic book morality proves his point. Or maybe it's because they were trying to make it easily digestible for you dipshits. But nonetheless, another person says, did Seth write this? Don't let him turn the bee into the onion, please. Jewish take. Maybe time to unfollow. Posts like this play right into Cooper's prediction about attacking the mythos of the war, proving him right ad nauseum. Yeah, and there's more, but you get the point. Don't want to belabor this any further. Nazis are mad that a right-wing satire site mocked Tucker Carlson for platforming a Nazi apologist. And look, it's not really surprising because I expect Nazis to be mad about this. But what makes this especially disturbing is how open they are about it. And I just feel like if I'm the Babylon Bee and I make a joke about somebody who did Nazi propaganda and my audience responded in that way, I would then maybe think, be a little bit introspective about the audience that I cultivated. I would question whether or not the information or the jokes rather that I've been putting out there are actually being received in the way that I want them to. I mean, some of them are because they're just downright racist, right? They made a joke about Vivek Ramaswamy running a 7-Eleven or something, White House 7-Eleven. I forgot what the joke was, but they got applauded by the right. So, you know, when you build up a right-wing racist audience, don't be surprised when they turn on you when you try to give them something that's actually, you know, true, that Nazis are bad. Now, prior to Elon Musk's takeover, this much Nazi shit wasn't a common phenomenon. It happened, it was there to be sure, but it wasn't ubiquitous, right? And that's a really bad sign that it's so common now because obviously it's dangerous. We have Donald Trump and the Republican Party normalizing racism and extreme xenophobia. And then we have Elon Musk using his social media platform to normalize Nazism. There's no longer a social disincentive to coming out to being a Nazi. I mean, you you probably can't do this at your job, but on the internet, it's pretty easy to just come out as a Nazi. And if anything, you'll be rewarded and not condemned. They'll praise you for being a bold truth teller and you can cry censorship if you're banned for engaging in the type of violent eliminationist anti-Semitic rhetoric that Nazis tend to engage in. But more often than not, Nazis don't explicitly say that they're Nazis. They use doublespeak in coded language. You know, they do what Tucker Carlson does and just dabbles in a little bit of Holocaust revisionism or denial from time to time while not explicitly endorsing it. Listen, as a society, we're going down a very, very dangerous fucking path. But I will say that I was a little bit hopeful, just a little bit, after looking at the comments underneath Tucker Carlson's video 
because while there were some people who were elated to see their favorite historian and uh, historian is a charitable word this man is a fraud not a fucking historian to be clear but they were elated to see their favorite historian and commentator team up but that was the thing Although there was also a lot of skepticism and people who were criticizing Tucker Carlson for not pushing back. So the silver lining, I think, is that normie Republicans who happen to be fans of Tucker Carlson because of his racist and xenophobic stance aren't necessarily automatically predisposed to accept outright Nazi apologia. So, you know, this was, I think, Tucker Carlson dipping his toes in that pool. But I mean, if it's too explicitly pro-Nazi, Tucker Carlson turns off his base. He has to go back to the dog whistles and the dabbling. And I guess that gives me hope because there's still a knee-jerk reaction among at least some conservatives when they see obvious Nazi apologia. That's that's good. That's something that maybe we can work with, hopefully. We lost them on racism and xenophobia, but maybe outright Nazism is something that can still be prevented. But, you know, Again, on the flip side, that's still the problem. Most people tune into Tucker Carlson because they do like his explicit racism and fascist takes on immigration. So if he's already been able to sell them explicit racism and overtly fascistic takes on immigration, then how long will it take for him to warm them up to Nazism as well? I mean, this is the guy that popularized the white supremacist great replacement conspiracy theory. And now that's kind of a mainstream take in a lot of Republican circles. So how long until... A lot of conservatives are just openly denying the Holocaust or they're believing this type of revisionist bullshit. It's really alarming. You know, when Nazis start coming out of the closet and far right parties start winning German elections for the first time since 1945, maybe that's a sign that we should start to take the global threat of fascism seriously. Because remember, Twitter doesn't exist in a vacuum. Users around the globe are exposed to the same Nazi propaganda that we're all seeing as well. So I don't know. Maybe uh, we should be a little bit concerned, but do with this information what you will.